Iron Man is my favorite Avenger, and for good reason too. This is a series explaining the technology behind various aspects of Iron Man armor and other Stark inventions. This video is about the arc reactor. Let's get started. The arc reactor is the absolute cornerstone of Marvel technology. Once perfected by Tony in the second Iron Man movie, the reactor not only powered his suits, but also showed that it was capable of negating the effects of the Mind Stone, something that was shown in the Avengers movie where Loki tried to control Tony, but instead it didn't work. He, Loki was surprised, he was like, what's going on? How will your friends have time for me when they're so busy fighting you? usually works. All well, performance issues, you know, it's not uncommon. Could it be possible that Tony Stark actually created an Infinity Stone? Does this give us an insight into how the Infinity Stones actually work? Now let's talk about the physics behind the arc reactor. The reactor itself is based on nuclear fusion, which as the name implies, fuses smaller atoms into bigger atoms, and obtains energy in the process. Now this is where the actual working of the arc reactor gets a bit iffy. There's three types of fusion that are claimed to be the energy of the future. Hot fusion, cold fusion, and inertial confinement. The arc reactor is based on a bit of hot and cold fusion. The hot fusion is very hot. I mean several million degrees sun hot. Here on Earth it works by subjecting a mixture of tritium and deuterium, which are hydrogen isotopes, forming an ionized ring of rotating plasma. The magnetic field squeeze the plasma and contain it inside a torus. They got this plasma thing right in the movie. It looks cool. The spinning plasma definitely makes a statement. This is not that realistic because the plasma would be clearly hot for the glass. And there's, there should be coils around the actual torus to contain the plasma. And not only that, the surface area should be used to take heat away from the torus for power generation. But due to subatomic particle emission, it would be better not to go anywhere near the reactor. The next type of fusion is cold fusion. Again, as the name says, it is much colder than the actual hot fusion. You can see cold fusion is actually considered impossible and an unrealistic form of nuclear fusion because it never worked. Yeah, no one has a working prototype of a cold fusion reactor. Anyways, it works on the principle of what is called catalytic fusion. Remember the scene when Tony tells Jensen to break down the other missiles and get some palladium? You know, we might be more productive if you include me in the planning process. Uh -huh. What is that? That's palladium, 0.15 grams. You need at least 1.6, so why don't you go break down the other 11? Palladium is a very widely used catalyst, often found in catalytic converters in cars. Kind of don't know why it poisoned Tony though, as palladium is a noble metal and it's usually inert, probably a product of the fusion reactor because pure metal isn't toxic. If Tony's absorbing it, then I guess he should have contained it better. The only thing his magnet would need would be a pair of leaves, as shown in the movie as well. Also, the reactor would work better if Tony made a palladium ribbon instead of a ring because a ribbon has a much higher surface area than a ring. The theory is that fusion occurs more readily because the palladium adsorbs, yes, adsorbs with a D, not absorbs. Adsorb means absorb into the surface. Palladium adsorbs hydrogen atoms into the surface, increases the rate of fusion. The next most obvious thing is what fuel does the arc reactor use? Hydrogen, helium, well, assuming that the arc reactor absorbs hydrogen from the air, somehow manages to filter the absolute minute quantities of tritium and deuterium, how does it work in space? Stark ain't wearing enough scuba tanks, or does it fuse the palladium? It is known that heavier metals can fuse, but only in circumstances that include, you know, high pressure, temperature, such as a star about to blow up. If it requires no fuel, then it's simply impossible because what is depicted there is essentially a perpetual motion machine, which is simply impossible, thanks to the laws of physics. 
Now let's talk about the energy that the arc reactor generates. Tony says his reactor produces about 3 gigajoules per second in the first movie. Oh. Wow. That doesn't look like a Jericho missile. That's because it's a miniaturized arc reactor. I got a big one powering my factory at home. I should keep the shrapnel out of my heart. But what could it generate? If my math is right, I don't know as is. 3 gigajoules per second. That could run your heart for 50 lifetimes. What does it actually mean? A joule is an energy unit, alright? And a joule per second is a watt. So the crudest design he made in a cave with a box of scraps has a power output of 3 gigawatts. That is crazy considering that the Hoover Dam produces only 2 gigawatts. And that's a 1200 foot by 700 foot tall dam. This arc reactor produces insane energy. And not only that, with two arc reactors, the entire city of New York can be powered. Of course, the later ones are also cool looking. And obviously, they're so much stronger. Some say it's 1015-ish gigajoules for the Mark II version. Since the Mark I is not capable of sustained flight, while the Mark II can send Tony supersonic. Now let's talk about the safety aspects of nuclear fusion and the arc reactor. Fusion is not a clean reaction as many say. Not that there's nuclear waste after use, but it's not clean in that fusion itself is not clean. Although hydrogen is used, it's hydrogen's isotopes. Tritium and deuterium are used. Tritium is radioactive, and when tritium and deuterium are fused, they release neutrons. The neutrons have to be captured, so even a clean fusion reactor needs neutron shielding. Now, a fusion reactor also exhibits Cherenkov radiation. There are papers written regarding charged particle emission from nuclear fusion. It's not to be taken lightly, because if you remember, what's the other thing that produces Cherenkov? called radiation fission reactors and you know how dirty they can get so in order to protect people from a nuclear reactor such as a fusion reactor there needs to be sufficient shielding so um yeah shielding has to be there even if it's a fusion reactor no matter how clean it may be the glow of the arc reactor in the movies is probably indicative of sharonkov radiation or maybe it's just an led that's a prop anyways so even if tony is unaffected like he is maybe he's shielded himself somehow it would be like firing the unibeam at everybody using Sharonkov radiation just by wearing the arc reactor. Here's a fun fact. Did you know MIT have come up with their very own arc reactor? Arc stands for affordable, robust, and compact. So it's more like an arc reactor for research purposes and smaller installations. I think it's pretty cool because, you know, you can have more fusion reactors for the purposes of research and, uh, you know, universities. People can study this stuff with relative ease. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for more fun facts.